In 2016, the world's first electrified road opened in Sweden, showcasing the ambitions of the Swedish government to make the country climate neutral by 2045. In addition to introducing, for example, taxes on flights and incentives to promote the sale of low and zero emission vehicles, the government has, in its strive for sustainability, decided to raise taxes on energy harvested from fossil fuel sources such as oil and gas. While these decisions are not as visible as the electrified road, they have cumulatively slowly but surely led to a situation rather strange to a first world country like Sweden. Namely that parts of the kingdom, mainly the southernmost tip of the country and the capital Stockholm, may soon be facing power shortages. In order to understand the challenges of supplying the Swedish people and industries with electricity, it is necessary to take a look at the chain of power supply. The largest share of power production stems from rivers in the northern half of Sweden and from nuclear power plants in the southern half of the country, which together account for around 80% of total power output. Nuclear power is however projected to decrease, with a scheduled closure of several reactors as a cause, effectively making the north the major power producing area. The third largest source of power is wind, which is harvested through turbines spread out rather evenly throughout the country, with the most plants in the southernmost and northern parts of the country. The demand for power is the highest in the major population centers of Sweden. High capacity power lines transmit the power from the aforementioned sources to these areas. The national grid was extensively developed in the early and mid 20th century, but has not been able to keep up with the increasing growth and electrification of the country. This means that even if the overall power supply exceeds the national demand for power, at times to an extent enabling the export of Swedish electricity, the transmission of electricity can at times fail when there is a high consumer demand. This is particularly noticeable in the southern region of Scania, which is located far away from the great power sources. This area not only grows by new residents, businesses and industries, but also undergoes developments in electricity dependent infrastructure, such as trams, heavy rail and ferry operations. At the same time, a Scanian nuclear power plant was shut down in favor of regional wind power, which at a first glance makes a good substitute for the radioactive waste producer in the windy area. However, wind power is not constant, which means that during cold winter days with little to no wind, the turbines produce very little electricity when people need it the most to heat up their homes and light up the dark Scandinavian winter days. Paired with the loss of nuclear power and the closure of several gas plants in the region, the deficiencies of the national grid led to businesses not being able to expand their production due to the lack of power. Thus, the issue is twofold. On a national level, the capacity of the grid network is falling behind. On a local level, power deficits may occur at specific times when the conditions are ripe, depending on several factors such as temperature, wind, and the immediate availability of alternative power sources such as nuclear and fossil fuel. The two dimensions are closely intertwined, with a more robust grid being able to provide for local shortages and a resilient local supply being independent from remote sources. Whereas a worst case scenario would entail power outages threatening critical societal functions and infrastructure, a more realistic consequence is that key stakeholders would act in a manner preventing such an outcome. However, if measures are not taken in order to strengthen the grid and promote the access to electricity, parts of the country risk stagnating economically. Businesses would have to look for alternative locations and new residents would have difficulties finding accommodation if housing is not provided for. The immediate threat to the supply has been adverted through a joint effort by private and state actors, which include interim measures such as the continued use of existing gas plants. However, this is not a long-term solution compatible with the 2045 goal of the government, which requires upgrading the national grid and increasing the capacity of transmission from the producer to the consumer, which in practice entails constructing new power lines between northern and southern Sweden. In the case of Scania, this is currently underway. However, the opening of the Southwest Link, a major transmission corridor built to transport power to the region, has been postponed numerous times due to technical issues. Turning to locally produced electricity would increase the resilience of the regional power supply, but the goal of climate neutrality implicates the use of renewable resources, which are not always prevalent depending on factors such as wind and light. 
Thus, the prediction of power supply is difficult to make compared to fossil fuel and nuclear power. In the longer run, several measures are required in order to secure the future constant access to electricity. This includes the streamlining of administrative procedures relating to physical grid infrastructure development, which today is a slow process of bureaucratic permissions. Moreover, in order to stay resilient in the event of transmission problems such as the failure of one major corridor, alternative routes should be put in place and ideally local power sources be put forward. Yet, it is not only for actors such as state entities and energy companies to take measures. Consumers have the increasing possibility to affect their consumption of power, and flexible utility price plans are becoming more accessible, putting forward incentives for people to use less power during the expensive electric rush hours in favor of consumption during calm periods. The issue with local and regional access to electricity in Sweden caught the country off guard. It may be argued that key actors should have been more proactive and taken action earlier in order to keep up with societal changes. However, nobody can predict the future with certainty. Just a decade ago, the idea of cryptocurrency mining and the establishment of large server halls and battery factories were quite strange, and electric vehicles just recently started to become a mainstream and economically viable option to gasoline and diesel-powered cars. Yet here we are. And judging from the technological and political developments in the 2010s, the switch to renewable resources and further electrification of industrial processes and infrastructure will take place with increased speed. The Swedish power problem may be a glimpse of what other entities could face if stakeholders take action without coordinating at all levels, from local to national and even international. Thanks for watching guys, if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe. I will be releasing short videos about current societal issues from around the world, and if you have any ideas on what I could research on, please comment below. Until next time.